This is Ken Pyle and we're at the MetaSwitch Forum. We're closing up the MetaSwitch Forum here with uh, Steve Gleave. Steve, you did a tremendous job of weaving the theme of the brains of the new global network. A lot of things to be impressed about, but why don't we start with that tagline? What does it mean? Yeah, it's a tagline that we've been using at MetaSwitch for about the last six to seven months. Um, we're really at the start now of, of pushing it um, both actually as an internal brand inside the company and then also sort of for external recognition, but it, it really means two things. The brains of the network have always been these kind of complex network control points. You can think of soft switches, session border control, IMS elements, uh, and typically they've always been dedicated hardware that comes with it. You, you get that software, it comes with hardware attached, and that's what you deploy. Um, in the new global network, and the global word, I mean, it can be as small as it, it can be big, but the bottom line is, when you start talking about new networks, the brains of these networks they're not going to be on dedicated hardware appliances anymore. They're going to live in private and public clouds. They're going to live on off-the-shelf hardware. They're going to run in virtual machine environments. And so the brains of the new global network are not going to be the brains of the old network. They're going to do similar things, but they're going to sit in different places. In turn, this new global network is going to become flexible, programmable, intelligent. It's going to be more cost-effective. It's going to be easier to generate revenue because it's going to be so much easier to deploy new services, to, to fast introduce, to fast fail etc so really what we're talking about is saying you may know MetaSwitch as a company that has always made software that you would think is the brains of the network whether it's routing software or soft switches or whatever that is application servers that brain is now on the move it's on the move into this more kind of commodity hardware cloud infrastructure and in terms of once you do that you get cost efficiencies and you get a whole bunch of new functionality what we've really been pushing here is to say that there are kind of three things about the brain that really matter to us. Number one, these brains are on the move. Number two, brains don't operate in isolation. They're part of extended nervous systems. And you can't just look at this software in isolation. It's part of higher level service chains. It's part of uh, sort of lower level, if you like, sensory modalities that are telling you what's happening in the network and you're making decisions on that. Um, and so it's part of a nervous system. And then the third part that we really care about with the brain is that everybody's brain is unique every single person I mean we're in the same industry can but we couldn't be different more different as people and you always have to keep that in mind there's no whereas we make a certain type of technology which is applicable to many people every person is going to interpret that technology differently deploy it differently use it differently uh, have different business plans based around it and so that's something that we're we're really cognizant of well and that's uh, you know just judging by the customers that were here you had customers from everywhere from independent operators to uh, cable companies to Celex, uh, uh, and and to your point they all have kind of a different way of doing business and one of the things that impressed me is in one of the, uh, uh, the short you know kind of uh, sessions you had was the whole open source nature and and the philosophy of why you did that but also it seems that that's a way for these independent uh, entities to really customize things to what they need for their market yeah, I mean, life changes, right? I mean, I remember when I didn't have kids, you know, and I thought, well, I'll have kids, and kids won't change me. I get kids, and I'm like, yeah, guess what? I'm changed, right? My life is completely different now. And I think, historically, telcos are like, well, no, this is the way we do stuff, right? And this doesn't change. Well, on the one hand, you get regulatory changes, and those regulatory changes come, and they stay, and then you say, all right, well, that's now changed. Technology-wise, telcos have always said, we own everything. We own the hardware. This is our little closed world. This can't be touched. Open source. No, we, we don't do open source. But then they start looking at themselves and they go, well, you know what? We have got some Linux in our network. We have got some Apache web servers in our network. Maybe we do use open source. And then they start looking at things like cloud solutions. They go, well, well, we'll build our own cloud. But then they start saying, well, you know, Amazon Web Services has dropped prices 38 times in the last six years on their on the, both their, their, their storage service and their uh, machine compute um, uh, instance uh, pricing as well. And, and suddenly you look at it and you go, all right, it has changed, and I've got to embrace that change, right? It's like, it's like when you get kids, you can't say, well, I don't have kids. You do have kids. And the fact that you say there's this big public cloud being built where the pricing is so ridiculously so much cheaper than we could do it and it can now handle real-time communications in a way that it never could before and companies like MetaSwitch are writing software to to leverage the the elasticity of those networks to scale up applications to reduce applications at busy hours to only use the stuff that you need you can't keep a blind eye on that anymore open source has clearly you know, the giants of the industry now are not the telcos. The giants of the industries are the Facebooks and the Googles and the people who have built these incredibly, you know, multi-billion user systems. And you've got to take the learnings from that 
and then reapply it. So, you know, we build an open source IMS core as our way of starting an open source, but there are so many areas you could go with open source, and it's trying to, you know, we can move very quickly technically, and it's trying to bring people with us at the same time. Um, and likewise, nobody wants to rip the value out of the industry, but there's ways of changing the value from where the value used to be to where the value can now be. Yeah, creating new value. And one of the things that impressed me, I just saw in one of these uh, sessions, well, two things. One, that you're able to put a virtual lab together and, and basically save a 60th the cost of what it would have been had you bought all the hardware for your own lab. And the other one was a demo of a new feature that someone just dreamed of on Tuesday and they demoed it here today. It was a, a, a voice appointment to a, a calendar update with the voicemail inside, the doctor doing an automatic appointment uh, update. It was incredible. So one of the things that uh, I've never seen an ending quite like you had. It, it, it'll leave an impression on me for a long time. <laughs> Pretty just glad it was over, Ken. <laughs> um, no, we set a precedent at, uh, at our last forum. We did a Chariots of Fire um, kind of skit at the end. It was part of a theme about the innovation race. We did this Chariots of Fire thing. And uh, it was, I, I just thought, well, we've got to do something this year. So, but what I, what I started to do this year as part of the brains thing was to narrate it over two days. So I had these series of videos running that was kind of showing the inside of my brain and they, these characters who were controlling me, a clown, a vicar, a schizophrenic job security officer, a uh, badly butchered British accent that occasionally sounds Australian. And these guys were all controlling me. Well, as we went through the sequence of things, we had another guy introduced who was a zombie, which was basically a hangover. So I don't think anybody could quite figure out where it was all going to lead. But then right at the end, when I finally went off, off stage after we'd finished it yesterday, after some closing remarks, um, we basically played it. Well, we'd already made a video. So the clothes I was wearing yesterday were the same as I'd worn three months ago when we made this video. And I come backstage, and it's like the camera's picking it up from there. This zombie guy appears. He's like there to try to say what happened to the musical number. And he gives me a jacket, and we basically break into this full thriller routine that we've done. So, um, massive Michael Jackson fan, um, best ever. And I just thought we would do a, a skit on thriller. So, the whole marketing team recorded a version. We actually had a customer choreograph it, so we involved a customer in it. Um, and we made the movie a couple of months ago, and we've just kept it under wraps, and nobody had seen it. And, you know, my boss actually, the CEO, hasn't seen hardly anything we do it for him. He just comes in and he's like, all right, well, impress me. Uh, and he's a, he's a very good sport because you had uh, him and uh, the others uh, up there with their talking heads. Uh, yeah, we had a spinning head kind of carousel thing that we'd done, which we'll probably put up on YouTube. And he was a good sport because he had a spoof ending in his. And and uh, But it's good because I'm, I'm just a huge believer in the fact that the industry is a little bit too dry. And we don't want to we don't want to be too... Um, too self-deprecating and we don't want to be like oh it's all just fun and games but you can't just talk technology 24 7 at some point you've got to put that technology in a perspective people go home and go yeah all right well done yeah. and that creativity probably uh, uh, switch flip some switches that helps on the uh, technical side right it, it all feeds off each other yeah the trouble with something about a theme around the brain is that you should start researching the brain you become more and more conscious about what's going on in your brain and it becomes one of these things you start going around and around into this like black hole of you like, you can't do anything without thinking well that's my brain making that happen now so um, yeah, this, this brain thing is going to stick. I mean, it is our tagline, and we're just going to continue to explore analogies and, and parts of the brain um, that, that, are, that are relevant to what's happening in networking. I think the key thing, though, is that it's not, it's not like you're just making it up for fun so we can get a thriller video. You know, when you look at some of the keynotes we had, Rob High from IBM, Jason Still for the future, I mean, it's all starting to sort of come together. And um, it's an incredibly exciting future, and I think for some people it's probably quite a scary future as well. Well, Steve, you've definitely given me a lot to think about, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Go listen to this Michael Jackson. Right? Yeah.